I am very thankful to organizers for this very entertaining online event. I will be talking about colorectal cancer, CIC, because it's uh, the most representative uh, and mostly frequently seen uh, oncological disease of GIT. The question I'd like to ask, do we need the molecular assay to profile GIT tumors? The answer is yes, and it does exist. And I will be talking about novelties in this sphere and what kind of tendency uh, we see in this sector of medicine. I'd like to start with the uh, re uh, colon cancer. We should re recollect uh, the work of colorectal carcinoma, the most uh, Interesting classification that is presented just in 2007. There are three main characteristics of the tumor genome chromosome stability, methylation or hypermethylation of MSI uh, that is characterized with a high level of mutation. The great share is the tumors of the fourth time, chromosome unstable without MSS. Uh, CIM are negative. Uh, this type of tumor uh, was described in the academic work. Uh, there is uh, inheritory, inher hereditary tumors of the GIT, Lynch syndrome, and then hypermethylated tumor or moderate methylated tumor. We know this adenocarcinoma with a sporadic and uh, uh, um, satellite instability, the third time, uh, a low level of MSI, uh, moderate chromosome instability, and moderate methylation. It's uh, the mixed type of tumors with the subtypes of tumors. Of course, a great attempt were made to make a predictive uh, properties or prognostic properties to these colorectal cancer. The third types uh, of tumors, uh, they are fully response uh, with, to the regimen with Irina Tekan, but we don't have the simple validated lab methods for all these types. At the same time, the stratification of patients uh, due to targeted mutations suggests uh, different types, and it uh, go hand in hand with heterogeneity. Classification shall help us to understand the aspects of future target therapy. Another classification that I'd like that is based on the comparison of the full transcriptional profile the number of all the uh, synthesized RNA cells. It was published in 2015. There are four types, CMS1, immunotype with a high level of MSI, CMS2, a classical dysregulation, and so on. Once again, despite all the attempts to work out prognostic uh, characteristics, so uh, we can't use all these classifications in practice. The clinical trials go more than 500 studies were registered. One is presented on the slide. We will wait. Parallelly, we will have to develop clinically transcriptome profiling to detect uh, these types of cancer in routine practice. Once again, all these classifications, they are useful to understand potential heterogeneity of the response uh, to target medications. Uh, the last uh, guidelines on the clinical molecular profiling, profiling was uh, published in 2017. The markers that were included there, it's uh, uh, different uh, 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 genes, BRAF, KRAS, uh, HRAS, and NRAS. Uh, there is uh, 
uh, there are uh, restrictions to identify patients suffering from Lynch syndrome. During the last three years, there are changes in the landscape of the molecular genetic testing for many oncological diseases, and colorectal cancer is not an exclusion. This slide shows some quotes from the uh, recommendations on colorectal cancer. Soma, uh, somatic uh, mutation, BRAF, instability, uh, they are predictive markers. So the slide shows the most important for signal pathways of the epidermal growth factors. Here we see in red the genes, when they are activated during somatic oncogenesis, it may lead to the refractory tumors, BRAF, R2 neo, AKT, and others. For all these markers, uh, they are in clinical recommendations. We have only gene BRAF. For the somatic mutations of the gene BRAF, there are evidence based that V600E mutation deteriorated the prognosis is associated with MSI and with the right side of localization. Meta-analysis was published and showed that patients with BRAF V600E won't benefit uh, from uh, the metasumab against uh, the classic scheme of uh, regimen of chemotherapy. There are therapeutic regimens including uh, duplets and carafenib demonstrated double-fold statistically significant improvement of the overall survival patients with the metastatic colorectal cancer, and it's reflected in the FDA. All in all, once again, BRAF V600E detection is a very important predictive value. Of course, there are other activ activating mutations, namely in the TCG consortium and other consortiums. It was shown that for tumors of the colon, there may be additional mutation, not in a V600 codons. They have a rather activation mechanism and they are interesting for targeting. We analyzed 200 colorectal adenocosinomes from Moscow to Novosibirsk. Rare mutations we do have in our samples. Their types are still, are still unclear as to the clinical application, but it's our future. Are the markers that change to the status in the MSI? It's uh, the changes of the length, uh, the predominance of mononucleotide sequences during the system of DNA uh, on pair, single pair reparation system. Uh, there, there is defect in the reading frames. And then, uh, with a high probability, we may see the short uh, sequences of immune epitopes. They can be easily recognized by the immune system. They become more active, and they are different from the normal cells of the body. Uh, the syndrome Lynch, Lynch syndrome that is characterized with the MSI instability uh, uh, with the help of immunotherapy, prognostic value has become more predictable, and it can uh, be a marker to predict the response uh, uh, patients to immunotherapy. ED1, ED, uh, PDL1, PDL, uh, PD1, PDL1, and CTLA4. Despite uh, their importance. In Keynote 059 trial, MCI high turned out to be the most important predictive marker as to the response of prem pembrolizumab. And it was reflected in the registration process. MSI, MSI high 
it's uh, the most important marker and the pembrolizumab may be administered for many types of solid tumors. Now, where the um, instability, of course, issue has its difficulties, and we have other me different methods. The classical method, amplification of different sequences, long sequences, and the definition of the changes uh, through the analysis of the fragments of DNA with metaphoresis. And this method um, is not registered uh, in most of the countries. It is um, labor-consuming and is subjective. A while ago, a company de Curtis commercialized a different method uh, for MSI, which is based on the application of shorter sequences and uh, further analysis of the curves uh, um, with the you know, specific profiles. This method makes it possible to, uh, to make the process automated. In spite of the publications with the results of the test, this method still um, raises questions and uh, there is the Lynch syndrome, particularly in the instances where Lynch syndrome manifests itself more. And the, of course, the cost of the test is very, exp very high. With different approaches, so it's necessary to start applying them in clinical practice. And um, the, uh, um, we have demonstrated the uh, concordance uh, aspect of MSI and uh, PCR and uh, molecular and genetic methods for MCI, MSI, uh, which was uh, not uh, um, usually that uh, applied for the endometrium cancer. So that's one of the incentives uh, to speak about the uh, sequencing as a direct method uh, for MSI um, uh, uh, setting. So in the genome, there are about 400,000 uh, microsatellite uh, repetitions, and there are uh, many of them in the genome. And uh, certain authors, uh, uh, Cortes, for example, and Cortes and Seriano, demonstrated uh, the high concordancy of the MSI system, um, as with Sendada methods and uh, molecular genetic methods. and. Uh, and um, 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 with uh, false sequencing. And uh, uh, the, um, this type of sequencing should be the gold standard because it makes it possible to assess the impact and the effect and the real uh, mutations uh, that lead to neoepitopes. And uh, this is not limited to the mix, uh, microsatellites, but it can actually uh, reveal the areas where the um, uh, amino acids are being uh, replaced. And uh, so we understand this uh, sequencing uh, is uh, not our approach yet. In order to simplify this method, we carried out the analysis of uh, uh, the tumors with MSI and without MSI, um, eight, uh, uh, two sequences, monorepetitions with a high stability level uh, in MSI negative uh, tumors and uh, mutated I into a different type. And, uh, and um, we, no. in this case, we were able to demonstrate the results for colon. Uh, and uh, there are many more of those now. Um, and uh, so for the um, um, uh, uh, prognosis for gastric cancer and uh, colorectal cancer. Well, uh, this can be used for the analysis of the um, uh, DNA, um, which really makes uh, our opportunities for diagnostics much more extensive. In this slide, we can see two other recommendations for testing. Now, we are well familiar with HER2, but as for the uh, enterka fusion, I'm not going to speak about HER2 separately, but enterka, uh, that's a different story. Um, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the driver genes um, um, uh, here are typical for hematological and abiotic um, tumors. We know that we can come across them even in the solid uh, tumors. Uh, quite a large percentage of those would contain them. Um, and uh, well, uh, they, they carry the um, re rebuilding of the uh, uh, cells and uh, the, the uh, drugs were necessary for the treatment of those were registered last year. And uh, so for the, and they're very important for the uh, factor of uh, 
um, um, resettling. And again, these results should be supported by the uh, histochemistry results. And uh, possibly the structure of the um, process can be uh, supported by that. For the uh, colorectal uh, carcinomas, a very special approach was suggested. And the first stage here is the um, sending out of the methylation. Uh, MLH1, and in case of the positive test uh, mutations, Keras and Rasbira, and in case uh, they're negative, then the tumor is uh, um, 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 a candidate for further GNS analysis with the um, uh, indicate lines. So this makes the screening method more t uh, targeted, better targeted, more effective, because we can see at present the percentage of these uh, rearrangements is limited. With this analysis, uh, we can try to um, understand what other rearrangement is occurred uh, in, in the uh, adenocarcinomas. And at present, we still do not have proper registration for this type of localization. Uh, the format is going to be off-label. But this approach is promising, and this type of analysis is uh, uh, um, being uh, applied by us in the laboratory. Now, in the um, M M M MGS is something that is being used very often. For uh, us, it's a golden standard quite often. MGS and, uh, has some positive aspects. First of all, makes it possible to assess the status of a large number of markers uh, with a minimal amount of material. This is most important because when there is small biopsy and we have limited um, amount of tissue, for example, uh, but um, um, and uh, CRC is actually very close to NC um, CLS by the number of markers. Uh, we can speak about different uh, um, locuses and genes, CRAS and NRAS and BRAF and many others, and we uh, possibly NRF. Um, and of course, there is also here too um, uh, the above mentioned uh, uh, panel of uh, MSI locuses and uh, 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 gene uh, rearrangements and um, RNK and uh, pr promising uh, markers with RNF43 uh, 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 fusions um, uh, uh, ZNRF3 uh, and RSP3 uh, to clinical trials are being carried out, and there are different stages with the increased number of um, samples. Uh, the cost of the analysis is going to be cheaper. Even now, it is quite adequate and acceptable. And of course, uh, NGS makes it possible to reveal unexpected mutations. One example on the slide, you can see the analysis of 126 um, DNA uh, well, uh, carcinomas, and we were able to find uh, patients with mutations. Uh, usually it's impossible to do with the traditional uh, testing. So the analysis is quite sensitive. Well, of course, we are facing with the lack of registration, with the shortage of uh, instrumentation. But the situation has been changing. And the introduction of NGS testing into practice is a very important trend uh, nowadays. Um, and. Um, um, which is part of our everyday practice and is going to be with us for the future. Thank you very much.